Welcome to week 31 of this restoration project. Just a week ago, our boat was put into the water for the first time since we got it. We were happy that there are no leaks from below the waterline and that we were able to drive the boat to its current location where the restoration continues. But before we start, let's have a look at where we are and what's the new situation. First of all, you need to know that our city of Berlin, Germany, has a lively and colorful water culture. There are lots of small and large boats, houseboats, rafts and other homemade vessels. Many people live year-round on the water, but not necessarily like one might imagine. While there are some really nice houseboats, some large barracks ships that can easily compete with any luxury apartment on land, the majority of the water population live in relatively small boats or self-made rafts or pontons with some structure built on top of it, serving as their living quarters. In this way, hundreds, maybe thousands of people live in a relatively small area with all kinds of different survival strategies. People usually form small clusters of two to three, sometimes a dozen or more boats called islands to protect them against weather conditions, but also theft and burglary. In this way, people can leave their boats for a few days without needing to fear that someone will break in or that it might sink in their absence. Of course, these things can still happen, but as part of a community, where one looks after the other and their property, the chances are much reduced. So, on the day we launched our boat, the first thing we did was to look for a community where we could join our boat to benefit from the above mentioned advantages. Thanks to some friends in common, we were lucky to find one right away, so that we could leave the boat and go get supplies from the mainland. Now then. Back to the beginning of this week, where, after the euphoria from last weekend had passed, I fell back down onto the hard floor of reality. And I'll be honest, it took me a few days before I got comfortable with the new situation. See, moving to a boat is a bit like moving to a spaceship in outer space. Most likely, none of your current daily routines will find much application in this environment. You'll have to come up with an entirely new set of workflows for almost everything in your daily life. Starting with simple chores like grocery shopping or bringing building supplies, if you're not connected to the shore directly, you'll have to move about in a dinghy, with or without motor, since you don't want to move your mothership all the time. On the boat itself, you'll have to get used to the constant movement of your vessel, even when the seas are quiet. In the beginning, you may experience some light seasickness from the frequent rocking up and down caused by waves from passing boats. At the same time, your vessel will be spinning around the anchorage point because of the wind and currents, which may also cause some discomfort. Then, when you get back on land after a long stay on the water, you may feel land sickness, where this time the absence of constant movement is the source of uneasiness. And now, without further ado, let's have a look at what happened in this week. The first thing I did was to blow up our new fenders. And I've checked the manual. You're supposed to look ridiculous when doing this. Next, it was time to set up our generator specifically to add its new exhaust pipe, which we had done by our welder friend. And here, once more, he did a great job. First, let's connect the new exhaust pipe to the existing muffler. And I want to emphasize that for now, we are just testing the generator. It's not supposed to stay here on the roof of the boat. The plan is to put it down in the engine room eventually, but for that we first need to build a platform. So until then, I'm sure our neighbors will love us. The main job of the generator is to charge our lithium battery house bank which, connected to our Victron Quattro, will deliver all the AC power we need for our daily life. And if we ever run low, or if we need additional electricity to run power tools, we'll just start up the generator again.
Now the Quattro is charging and for us that means that we have to make the best use of the currently available surplus of energy by charging as many battery banks as possible and all our battery powered devices. Once again what you see here are just our test setups. We can also start the generator with a remote control. Alright, next let's put the ladder back here in the forward cabin. First we'll add two metal pins to the legs so that the ladder is secured. Then we drill the corresponding holes into the floor. Put the ladder in place. Et voilà. Next, let's close off this hole here in the floor of the galley more properly. We'll just use the existing wood and cut off the excess length. And there you go, much better. Alright, here is another little test setup, which we plan to use to refill the smaller diesel tanks, such as for the diesel heater or for the generator, off the main diesel tank. And it's working perfectly. I had to make a key for our main entrance doors because these were not provided. For this I got a generic key which I'm gonna cut to fit. And it turns out the doors were locked all along. Next we are back on the insulation job, this time with Armaflex 32mm, provided by our sponsor, the company Armacell, manufacturer of specialized engineered foams, which usually find application in the industrial sector, but whose products are also being used for the insulation of camping vans and boats. We're gonna start here in the forward cabin with this large empty wall on the port side. Actually, it's not that empty because there's the gas line passing right through. So let's first take some measurements. As I said before, the material we have here is the 32 mm Armaflex. It has a very soft, spongy texture. It's very easy to cut. It's self-adhesive and has a reinforcing grid. This, my friends, is the good stuff. You should always cut the material about one centimeter bigger than the space you have, so that when you put your piece in place, it's under a little pressure. Now the knife you use should be really sharp, otherwise you won't get clean cuts. This here is a ceramic knife, which is great for smaller jobs, but because you can't sharpen it, a metal blade will be more suitable for bigger jobs. So here we put in the first piece. Armacell also provided us with a special pen to mark directly onto the Armaflex foam. So let's cut some more material. and put more pieces in place. The only difficult part with this is how to remove the plastic foil that covers the adhesive side. I found the best way is to pull it loose on one end, put the piece in place and then pull out the foil from underneath while progressively pressing the material against the wall or ceiling. On this cut here, you can see my knife is already starting to get a little dull, but it still works.
Alright, here's the last piece I'm gonna cut for this side. And this one we're gonna cut into four smaller pieces to fill up the remaining gaps here at the bottom of the wall. And there you have it, the first wall is done. Overall, not a very challenging activity as long as you know how to do it and you respect certain measures. Actually, there is one thing left to do, and that is to glue together the seams between two pieces. For this, Armacell offers a special adhesive, which can be applied with a simple paintbrush. Here, it's important not to put too much glue between the two seams. And after a few seconds, you can simply push the two pieces together where they will stick. One thing I forgot to mention before, is that you need to make sure that your surfaces are absolutely clean. For this we are using Armaflex cleaner, with which we wipe the surfaces till they are completely free of dust and grease. Here we are now on another day, where I'm using a different technique. I'm using this leftover piece of wood as a ruler, and then cut the material directly without making any marks. So let's quickly do the wall on the starboard side in the forward cabin. First the two larger pieces and then we cut some smaller pieces for the remaining areas. And then this is also done. Now let's attack the ceiling here in the forward cabin, which has a very interesting structure to say the least. Let's start here in the very front with that triangular area. And by the way, if you pay attention to what's happening outside the window, you can see the boat constantly spinning around the anchorage point. Here's a good view on how to put in place a piece. First, you tuck it in place on the most difficult area to get to, then you pull out the plastic foil from underneath while holding it in place and then pushing it firmly progressively as you pull out the foil. Here is another view where you can see that I tuck it in underneath that angle profile. Then I start pulling the foil on the opposite corner while pushing the foam against the ceiling. This is what you want to end up with when putting armor flex on more difficult areas. Ideally the four corners are already put in place so that you just have to pull out the foil on one of the sides. Here is an obstacle right in the middle of one of the areas we want to cover. So all we have to do is cut out a hole that's big enough. And then put the stuff in place. Next we have to cut out the shape of this hatch. Then we put that in place and finish up the rest. And at this place I'm gonna have to stop, because I don't want to cover up the holes where I might want to put some screws through to fixate that hatch covering up the stairways. 
but for that I need a little time and material to consider different options. So for now, please enjoy the 90% finished ceiling insulated with 32mm Armaflex. And at this point I'm signing off, thank you so much for watching and see you again in the next video.